Now you don't have a hundred thousand, your credit sucks. Nobody's going to give you a mortgage. You don't have a down payment. You've got nothing. And so you think, oh, well, I guess they're right. It takes money to make money. That is the biggest load of ever. Don't <laughs> listen to anybody who ever says it takes money to make money. Hey, what's going on Cashflow Hackers? It is Chris and Mike back here with Cashflow Hacking and Life 180. And today we're going to be talking about how to get started in real estate and get your first property. What do you think, Mike? That sounds good. Sounds like a good thing, right? That sounds like a great I thing. I know a lot of people watching this right now who probably are trying to figure out, especially in today's market and economy and real estate market with everything that's going on, they're trying to figure out how to get their first property. How, how, how can they get involved in becoming a real estate investor for the first time? Because that first one, you'd agree, the first one's always the hardest. It right? is, yeah. The first one so. is really is uh, by far the toughest. Then after that, I think the biggest thing is just confidence. Like you don't have yeah. the confidence. Even even if you learn a strategy, like a lot of people think it's just not going to work for them. Yeah. And anyway, I'm going to prove you wrong right now. I love it. Right now. Perfect. So yeah, buying your first home, there's so I mean, there's so many different ways to 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 get into the market. Yeah. I usually would I think your resources really dictate what your first deal is going to look like. And so if somebody came to me and said, Hey, I want to do my first deal. And I've got a client like this. I'm selling my dental practice. I'm going to have five million bucks in the bank. That's a much different conversation if somebody comes to me mm -hmm. and says, "Hey, Mike, I don't have, I have like zero in my bank and my uh, my credit sucks." Now, believe it or not, even that person, that second person, can still get in the market. So I'm going to give you a few different ways you can get started. One, I recommend for most people, you start with something low risk and low capital because you want to have as little to lose as possible. So the first thing that comes to mind uh, is wholesaling. Now wholesaling is uh, basically you're, you're not actually even buying a property. So this is not for somebody who wants to actually live in the property or rent the property. This is for somebody who wants to make their first paycheck if they have no resources. Mm -hmm. And so uh, imagine you're driving your kids to soccer practice and on the way you see this dilapidated home, you see it a million times, every time you pass by you go, what an eyesore. I wish they just fix this up. Well, now that you know how to wholesale, you're thinking, no, I'm glad they didn't fix this up. That's a paycheck waiting to happen. That's an opportunity. Yeah. And so instead of complaining about it, you actually do a little research. Maybe you pull title, you find out who owns that property, and you call them and say, listen, you know, I, I keep driving by your house at 123 Main Street, and you know, what's the scoop on that? It's just sitting there vacant, and the weeds are up to my knees. What's going on? And quite often, you'll have a conversation that goes like this. They'll say... Well, you know, um, I inherited this property and I thought owning real estate was supposed to be a good thing, but all I get is like the city sending me fines for not uh, taking care of it. I'm getting these property tax bills. I, I just yeah. want this thing out of my hair. Mm. And imagine, you know, they said something like, you know what, I, I would, if, if somebody gave me $100,000, I would just like get rid of this darn thing. And you being a, a savvy investor, now that you've watched this video, you've done a little research, you know, the home's worth 300,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna use really round numbers. Uh, your mileage may vary, uh, but imagine that was a conversation. Now you don't have a hundred thousand. Your credit sucks. Nobody's going to give you a mortgage. You don't have a down payment. You've got nothing. And so you think, oh, well, I guess they're right. It takes money to make money. That is the biggest load of crap ever. Don't <laughs> listen to anybody who ever says it takes money to make money. Instead, what you do is you say, wow, a hundred thousand dollars. You know what? Let's let's do a deal. And so you put something on, on paper. You, you write up a contract. And in the contract, you put what's called an escape clause, uh, meaning that if for some reason you can't complete the deal, you're going to walk away from it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to find an investor like myself and say, hey, Mike, I've got this property that you'll probably make $200,000 mm -hmm. flipping. If you give me $50,000 or four years, 60 or 30 or whatever we negotiate, if you give me $50,000, I will assign that contract to you. Now, what that means is I'm gonna pay you the 50,000, and there's never gonna be a day where somebody says, you can make 200,000 if you give me 50,000. In my mind, that's a good deal every day of the week. So I'm never gonna say no to that. If you find a deal like that, you know hit us up, hit us reach up. out, Absolutely, we'll absolutely. So now you uh, assign that contract to me. That means that I'm gonna go and, and deal with the flipping of it. I'm gonna go fix it up if it needs fixing. I'm gonna deal yep. with the selling of it. I might get my paycheck in four to six months from now. You get paid right, pretty much right away. and then what you do is you rinse and repeat. Well, now you got 50 grand in your bank, so that will actually allow you to do other types of deals, even though previously you didn't have any cash in your bank. Yep. Now you do. Uh, but, or you can just keep rinse and repeat and keep doing wholesale deals, deal mm -hmm. after deal after deal. And somebody like myself, 
I have a pretty big appetite for good deals. So <laughs> you don't have, just because you found one for me, doesn't yeah. you have to stop and say, oh, I did my one deal. I guess yeah. I'll just uh, go back to my nine to five. No, like if you're good at finding oh, deals, keep finding deals. There are a lot of people who do wholesaling exclusively and do really well. And so when, when you look at that, Mike, um, we talk about different profiles, right? Like there are different profiles for people who are looking to get involved in real estate, you know, and get into that first deal. And so this is great for somebody who doesn't have any money. Heck, I mean, this is great for anybody. Great ultimately. for anybody, absolutely. Now, I mean, if you if you can find a deal and you understand how to do it, it's an opportunity to be opportunistic in how to do it, right? Like you, absolutely. you don't even have to focus on it. You could just right. kind of like right. drive around and be opportunistic. You just need to know the process and what to do once. And that's called, that's called driving for dollars, by the way. Yeah. And some people find properties by mistake, and some people do that on purpose. They intentionally yeah. just drive around, yeah. looking for you know neglected homes. I love it. And so. If you fall into the profile, though, where you don't have any capital, you don't have good credit, you don't kind of fit the, like, check all the boxes for what, uh, you know, Main Street would tell you you need to have to, to fit the criteria of a good real estate investor to get started, it's a great way to get started. So let's talk about, though, now, let's talk about a different profile. Okay. Let's talk about, like, let's say you have a little money. What do you do? Yeah. Well, one of my favorite strategies, and it's something that I've been teaching for years, is how to do tax deeds. Mm. And what, what a tax deed is... When somebody hasn't paid their property taxes in like three or four years, eventually the county, they need that money. That goes to their uh, hospitals or schools or police or fire department, etc. They need that, that revenue. And so eventually they've got to put that home up on the auction block. And uh, they put it up. The starting bid is whatever the back taxes owing are. And so I've had some of my students pick up single family homes for like $7,000, $8,000, $9,000, $10,000. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. One of my students picked up a single family home. This is in Houston, Texas. It was worth back in those days, somewhere between 90 and a hundred thousand. Yeah. And there was a renter and they were paying 900 a month. He got it for $7,200. And that's not the down payment. That is the actual purchase price. He paid $7,200. Total for acquisition home. cost. 7,200 bucks. So you wow. could literally do that. A lot of people could do that on a credit card. Uh, a lot of people, if you, if you find that deal, come to me, I'll give you the 7,200. We'll split the deal. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of ways to do that, w w even if you don't have the 7200. There's lots totally. of ways to do that deal using other people's money. But the fact of the matter is it was renting for 900 a month. So he kept the tenant in place. And you can do the math. It didn't take very many months before he had his $7,200 back. And he kept going to the auction. And he kept picking up property after property after property. I think the most expensive one he bought was around 15000 or so. Uh, but this is a great strategy that most people don't know how to do and don't attempt to do it if you don't know what you're doing. You will lose your shirt, by the way. But <laughs> once you know how to do it, and I'm not saying you're going to just be able to say, hey, I'll go to the auction, pick up 100 homes. There is going to be competition. There's going to be not every home is a good deal. There are going to be auctions you go to that you don't find a home. Absolutely. You're going to come home empty handed sometimes. Yep. But that's part of the that's part of the game. It's yep. just like anything else. Yep. But the bottom line is if you were to do that strategy properly and consistently, you can make mm -hmm. a lot of money doing it. And uh, it's, it's uh, you know, one of those things that even I was skeptical about until I started doing it myself. That's but awesome. I, I started maybe 12 years ago before that. I've been in real estate 32 years. The first part of my career, I never even heard of it. Later on in my career, I had heard of it, but I was kind of skeptical. Seems too good to be true. And then I started doing my research and uh, uh, tried it myself. And I, now I'm a believer. So... Uh, so there's a whole bunch of ways you can get your first property. Even if you don't, you're not sitting on millions of dollars. You don't have to have that. Most of the real estate, most of the most successful real estate investors I know started with very little. And in some yeah. cases, uh, in my case, I started with less than zero because I had my net worth. I had student loans around 24, 25,000, which in 1989, before you were born, uh, was a lot of money. I was nine years old then. Oh, there you go. Well, see, I, I wish you would have paid my debts. Right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was like 24,000 in debt back in, in 1989 with student loans. And that's when I got, I started to get into real estate uh, in order to pay off those student loans. And so when you, when you hear it takes money to make money, that's a fallacy. There's lots of ways to get started with little or no resources. What you need is knowledge. Knowledge okay. is king. So that's what you do if you have a little bit of money. So let's talk about somebody who maybe uh, is in a different position. Maybe they're a doctor, maybe they're a dentist, maybe they're an entrepreneur, maybe they're some sort of business owner or an executive and they're just like, listen, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of ground out and, and I kind of see the end or I don't know how much longer I want to do this and I want to come up with a five to 10 year exit strategy and I've got capital, I've got money saved, I've got cash flow, I can put it into properties. What do I do? 
Yeah, well, that's actually a conversation I have on a daily basis. Yeah. I actually, it's funny you mentioned dentists because I'm working with several of them right now. Okay. Uh, but one in particular, when he first came to me, he goes, hey, Mike, you know what? I, I'm not, I don't hate dentistry. I'm still passionate about it. Mm. But, you know, and he, he's around my age. I'm, I'm uh, mid 50s. Mm -hmm. And he said, when I first started, you know, I was really gung ho. I loved it. Now it's like I, can, I can't see in people's mouths as well as I could back in the day. And bending over all day long, my back hurts. I just don't know how much longer I can do it, even though I still like it. Mm. And so we're now, uh, I'm working with him to help him sell his practice. He's going to get somewhere around 3 or $4 million. And then the key is to start putting that into property, rental mm -hmm. properties to start generating passive income and cash flow. And the more properties you get, once you can get to the point where all your bills are paid by your, your rent that's coming in, then you're set. Then you've got freedom. You don't have yep. to go and chase money anymore. Once you have enough money coming in to support your bills, your lifestyle, and that's what I call not only financial freedom, but you know a lot, a lot of people have financial freedom. They, they've learned how to make money. They've been very yeah. successful, but they don't have the time freedom. Well, now he's gotten rid of his business, mm. so that takes away all that uh, you know all that time that he used to have to spend going to and, to and from his office. Mm -hmm. uh, but on top of that, the key is to have the right people on your team to manage those properties, look after them, so that you're not you're not chasing after people for rent. You're not getting calls at two in the morning with leaky toilets. It's you don't want to manage it yourself. So you have to have the right teams, and I call that turnkey uh, yeah. investing. And that's one of the things I do for my clients. I've been doing it in Atlanta, Georgia, for around pretty close to 10 years now mm -hmm. and uh, we've helped a lot of busy professionals to uh, create passive income and get their time back and time is the, it's a non reading money is they can obviously print as much as they want we're, we're they're printing trillions of dollars right now mm -hmm. so by time you can't get that back we all the same 24 hours in a day there's nothing you can do to get that back if you miss spending time with your kids you're never going to get that time back so you've awesome. got to protect your time i love it and i agree so just to recap a little bit we covered the three ways that you can get into your first real estate property, whether you have no money, a little money, or you're sitting on an nest egg or cash flow or whatever, you can, you can actually really get involved in what I would consider to be the pinnacle of real estate investing, which is cash flow turnkey real estate, right? That is where everybody wants to go. Like whether you're, whether you're doing the wholesaling thing and with no money, the tax deed thing with a little money, you're trying to actively build cash to get to here, right? To get to the cash flow turnkey stuff because that's where the freedom exists, right? That's how you've created the life where you just Absolutely. kind of travel around the world and move about the cabin at will, right? Absolutely. And so, so that's what it's all about. So no matter what, whether you have no money, little money, or a lot of money, we gave you the strategies. So hopefully you found value in that. If you did, please smash that like button. That way the YouTube algorithm gets this out to millions of people, hopefully. And, um, it, and if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, that way you get notified every time we launch a new video. And check out, at the end of this, you're gonna see a link um, to a, on the end screen here that's gonna have a real estate investing playlist that is gonna be, if you're somebody who's looking at getting involved in real estate, make sure you click on that list, make sure you watch those videos because they're gonna be very powerful in educating you on how to get started. Go down below, check out the cash flow hacking link. You can go there, check it out learn how to get mentored by Mike and Cole and myself and everybody that's involved in this cash flow hacking community to be able to help you reach your freedom number and be able to be financially free.